This video is going to show you the best way to make forest plots in Microsoft Excel and it's the method that I used to create this forest plot showing data from the NBA season in 2018-2019. To get started we first need to compile the data and here I've got the 30 NBA teams listed, a standardized effect size which represents a standardized measure of their average points per game in the 18-19 season where the average of all the teams is zero and a 95% confidence interval for that value. And the first thing we need to do is to create this Y values column, which just needs to be a descending series of numbers from the top, just like this. So 30 being the, the highest number, there's 30 teams descending down to, to number one at the bottom. We then need to insert an XY scatter, just like this. And then if we right click in the middle of it, we can select data and add a data series. We'll call the first data series data. The X axis values will be the effect size. And the Y values will be my Y values column. And that looks like this. And just looking at this now, I've realized that the data points are arranged in the order that they are in this table, which is based on the alphabetical order of the team names. But what I would really like is for it to be in order of the size of the effect. So if I sort my effect size column, largest to smallest, and then redo this Y values column, The data points are now arranged in the way that I'd like. Next, I'm just going to make some aesthetic changes, like removing the chart title, removing the grid lines, double click on the Y axis, make it a solid black line and remove the label. Make the X axis a solid black line make the text black as well okay the next step is to create the error bars the horizontal error bars that represent the 95 percent confidence interval so i'm going to click on one of the data points which will highlight them all like this we've got a plus up here in the top right of the chart which will open up chart elements and if i click on that i can click on error bars and that gives me a vertical and a horizontal error bar but I only want to keep the horizontal one. So if I click on one of the vertical ones, it will highlight them all and I can press backspace to delete them. Next, if I click on the horizontal error bar, we can see that by default, it's representing the standard error of these values. But I want it to show my 95% confidence interval that I've calculated over here. So if I click on custom and specify value, in the positive and negative error value boxes, I can just provide my whole 95% confidence interval column. Like so. And now the error bars are representing the confidence interval like I'd like. The next step is you'll see that the Y axis extends further than there is data. And if we double click on the Y axis, we can see that's because the maximum value here is 35, but I've only got 30 teams worth of data. So that's why it extends further. And I can manually adjust that to 30, so it fills up the full space. Another aesthetic preference of mine is if I select the error bars, I wanna remove this cap on the end, which is the little hat. And you can do that by selecting no cap. Okay, so the next step is to provide the labels that'll be on the left-hand side of the chart. And what we need to do first is to decide where along the x-axis or at what x-axis value do we want the labels to be set at. I've made this one earlier and here you can see all the team names are set at negative 1.4 on the x-axis. So I'm going to set this one at the same, 
Let's put negative 1.4 in this left labels x position column. Just like that. So now I can right click on the chart, select data, add data. I'm going to call this left labels. My x values will be this new column that we've just made, and the y values will be y values. And that'll now look like this. So if we click on one of these data points that have just been made, we can click on chart elements again. And if we click on data labels, there'll be a little arrow on the end of it. We can add a data label to the right, which will just give us these numbers. Then we can remove the marker in marker options here set it to none. So now we're left with these data labels where if we select one of them, all of them will be highlighted and we can give in the label options, label contains a value from cells. You'll see that Y value is automatically selected, but we can deselect that and there'll be nothing there at the moment. But if we click on value from cells, we can provide a range of values that will act as the data label, just like this. I'll, I'll stretch that out a bit just so they can all be fit onto the one line. And you'll see that the X axis has automatically expanded to account for this, these new labels that we've just created. So if we double click on the X axis, click on these three bars here, and in axis options, the minimum's gone down to negative two. But because our left label X axis position is only negative 1.4, that's as far as we need to go. So I'm going to just manually change that to negative 1.4. And now it fills the space a lot nicer. I'm going to do the same thing for the right side. And on this version that I've created earlier, the right side labels I've used to actually show the effect size and the 95% confidence interval with a plus and minus uh, operator in between them. So to do that, again, I need to provide an x-axis position for, for the right side labels. So I'm gonna provide 1.4, a positive 1.4. And then we need to have a column, which will actually be the text that we want to be presented on the chart. So to do that, I'm going to go equals, my effect size, but it needs to be this needs to be a rounded effect size. Two decimal places. I'll go and open quotation marks space plus and minus space close quotation marks and round by ninety five percent confidence interval to three decimal places just like this. Now I can drag that down. And now this column is the exact text that I would like to have displayed on the right side of my chart. So I can right click on the chart again and select data. This time will be right labels. My x axis values will be my right labels x position. Y values as always is y values. And that just looks like this. And we go through the same process as before, putting in data labels. This time I'll put it on the left side. Remove the marker. Three bars. Value from cells will be these labels. Remove my Y value position. And there we are. Again, the X axis has expanded to account for this new data. So see it's now up to 1.6 as the maximum value, but I'll bring that down to 1.4. Cool. I'm going to make this text black. I'm going to make my marker black. These are just aesthetic preferences of mine. 
cool. Uh, so the next step is uh, an optional one. If there's a particular effect size of interest or a particular threshold or cutoff value for your data set that's of, of significance or of interest, sometimes it can be useful to show that on the chart. Here you can see I've put these dashed lines at negative 0.2 and positive 0.2 which in, for my effect size, shows a, a small change. Um, so the way we can put them onto a chart, and you can put them at any uh, value that you'd like, is by creating these two new columns, and you could, you could have as many of these as you want, but I'm just going to show two, and put it at the value that you would like the, the vertical line to be. So I'm going to go negative 0.2 and positive 0.2. and copy all the way down. Then I'm going to right click, select data, add, and I'm going to call this a negative threshold. The X values will be this column, and again, the Y values will be the Y values column. The only difference this time is once we've selected the data points, instead of creating data labels like we've done with the labels on the left and the right side, we will select solid line. I'm going to make the line a dark grey, reduce the width, and I like this dash type, so I'm going to select this dash type. Then we can remove the marker. And that'll look like this and it's just a, a good way to, to visually represent if there's any particular values of interest uh, I think so I'll do the same with the positive side x values will be this column with positive point twos my y values some y values And I just go through the same process, solid line, dashed, yep. And remove the marker. And there we go. Uh, there are a few other aesthetic changes that I made in this one, like I added a logo to the top right corner, I've given it a title and a subtitle, I've changed the fonts, I've given each team uh, label value and data point its own color which can, can help show which team it is um, but they're all just aesthetic changes that you can adjust and, and modify based on your data set to, to suit your needs but that is the full process of how I think is the best way to, to produce forest plots in Microsoft Excel and that's it so if you got some value out of this video, make sure you give it a like and please give me a hand by subscribing to the channel. I've got some what I think are good ideas for tutorials like this that I think will be of value to sports scientists and analysts and anyone trying to visualise data coming up in the future. So make sure you check them out. Thanks.